Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Can We Reduce Our Environmental Footprint One Food at a Time? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, published on January 13, 2022. Research conducted by Donald Rose and Amelia M. Willett-Smith from the School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine at Tulane University and Martin C. Heller from the Center for Sustainable Systems in the School for Environment and Sustainability at the University of Michigan. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Have you ever wondered what you can do to help the environment and slow climate change? What about eating certain foods because they are better for the environment? Producing the food you eat uses a lot of water and releases gases that warm the planet. If you ate foods that had a smaller impact on the environment, you could help fight climate change. But it's hard for most people to change their entire diet. So we wondered if replacing just one food could reduce a person's impact on the environment. We collected diet data from a national survey in the USA. We figured out which foods produced the most carbon emissions. Then we created new potential diets where we substituted foods that had a smaller impact. We found that replacing beef products reduced carbon emissions and water use the most. That means not eating beef can lower the impact of your diet on the environment. Introduction. Do you know how big your carbon footprint is? Your carbon footprint accounts for the greenhouse gases produced by your daily habits and activities. For example, Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas emitted by gasoline-powered cars and trucks. A common suggestion to reduce your carbon footprint is to walk or take public transportation instead of driving. But what about changing what you eat? Food systems are responsible for a third of global greenhouse gas emissions. Also, growing food uses about 70% of global freshwater resources, and these impacts are different for different foods. This means that the choices you make at the grocery store can have a huge impact on the environment. In the image, you can see that the parts of a food system include everything from producing food on a farm to what happens to your leftovers when you throw them away. Starting at the top and moving clockwise, the parts of a food system include imports and exports from agricultural production, processing, distribution, retail, and waste. This figure was made by Karsten Roden for Spur.org. Particular types of food produce more greenhouse gases than others. Producing beef creates 8 to 10 times more greenhouse gas emissions than the same amount of chicken, and about 20 times more than nuts or seeds. Some foods also need more water than others to grow. If people could reduce these foods in their diet, it would be better for the environment and for the climate. It's not easy for everyone to change their entire diet to focus on foods with smaller environmental impacts. We thought it might be easier for people if they only had to change a single food item. We decided to see if changing a single food in a person's diet would have any impact on their environmental footprint. Methods we used diet information for a single day from the U.S. National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey in 2005 through 2010. It included a total of 16,800 adults. We identified all the foods in their diets. We then looked at the environmental literature on food production to, one, create a database of the carbon footprint for each food, and two, estimate how much water went into producing each food, considering where foods were produced and the availability or scarcity of water in those locations. We called this our water scarcity footprint. We ranked foods based on their carbon footprint. All the top 10 ranked foods were beef items. We identified all the people who reported they consumed beef on that survey day. For these people, we created a potential new diet that replaced the high-ranked food for something with a smaller carbon footprint. The substitutions were similar in calories, cooking styles, taste, and how they were eaten. For example, we used ground turkey as a substitute for ground beef. 
We calculated the carbon footprint and the water scarcity footprint for each person's original diet. We calculated these footprints for their potential new diet and then compared. We determined how healthy the original diet was and how healthy it would be with the substituted food. For comparison, we also looked at diets where we made substitutions for foods other than beef. Results. The top 10 ranked foods were all beef. For example, ground beef, beef steak, and beef roast. We found 3,320 people, or 19.8% of our sample, who ate foods with those products. When we replaced the data for beef with an appropriate meat substitute, it made a big difference. The carbon footprint decreased by 48.4%. That's almost half. The water scarcity footprint decreased 29.9%. People's diets became healthier. Why? The substitutions reduced the amount of saturated fats people consumed. When we averaged our data across all the people in the survey, even the ones who didn't eat those beef products, we still found that the carbon footprint decreased 9.6%. We also found that the water scarcity footprint decreased 5.9%. Here in Figure 1, you can see how much environmental impact decreased on average when we substituted a single food. The foods that we replaced were all ranked in the top 10 highest carbon footprints and were all some type of beef. On the x-axis, you can see information about the carbon footprint on the left and the water scarcity footprint on the right. The y-axis represents the re reduction in those parameters. Data from people that had substitutions can be seen in purple, while data averaged across all people can be seen in orange. What impact did substituting a single food have on the carbon emissions and water scarcity footprint of a person's diet? We found that substituting foods in place of shrimp or dairy milk also decreased the carbon footprint for individuals, while substituting foods in place of asparagus or almonds decreased the water scarcity footprint. However, in general, the impact was not as large as substituting alternatives to beef products. Here in Table 1, you can see examples of additional substitutions that were not in the top 10 foods for highest carbon emissions. Beef is included for comparison in the top row in italics. These percentages are only for individuals who ate the foods we substituted, not averaged across all the people in the survey. The two left-hand columns show the original food and the substituted food, while the two right-hand columns show the reduction in carbon footprint and the reduction in water scarcity footprint. You can see when shrimp was substituted with cod, it reduced the carbon footprint by 34.1% and the water scarcity footprint by 6.1%. In contrast, when asparagus was substituted with peas, it reduced the carbon footprint by 6.5% and the water scarcity footprint by 48.2%. Here you can see figure one again. And here you can see Table 1 again. Discussion. Substituting single foods can reduce the environmental footprint of a person's diet. Removing beef from a person's diet had the largest impact, even averaged across everyone in the survey. Other foods had smaller but still significant impacts. Replacing high-impact products could help reduce greenhouse gas emissions and water use. Future studies should also incorporate plant-based meat analogs as substitutions. Think about burgers or sausages that use soy, wheat, and or vegetables instead of meat. Plant-based products have a much lower carbon footprint than ground beef. These options are easier to find in stores today. So, people might be more willing to replace beef in their diet now. Conclusion. The climate is changing rapidly and it can be hard to know how to help. It is clear that we need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. 
Government should play a role and industry needs to do its part, but individuals can also have an impact. Here are some ways you can help. Eat less beef. Choose chicken or meat analogs instead. Try eating vegetarian at least one day a week. Join the Meatless Monday campaign and introduce the idea to your friends or your school. Eat organic foods. The creation of fertilizers and pesticides produces lots of greenhouse gas emissions. Or plant your own garden so you can buy less produce at the store. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.